Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of The Third Degree. I'm your host, Sid Rosenberg, joined today by Hall of Fame kicker and former Kansas City Chief great Jan Stenerud. Jan, welcome to the program. Nice to be with you. Nice to have you here and a couple of big events coming up. Jan will take part in the big Hall of Fame golf tournament taking place on January the 30th. Also going to have a sweepstakes for that event, which could send somebody, in fact two people, to the Super Bowl in Tampa for 2009. You want to learn more about that, the sweepstakes, and the golf event, just go to www.opensports.com, backward slash HOF for Hall of Fame players. You can learn more about the golf tournament coming up on January 30th, all Hall of Famers, and the chance to win two tickets to the Super Bowl, two grand prizes, uh, all right there at opensports.com. Let's get to you, Jan, here. You know, you had the big game in Super Bowl IV when you kicked the 48-yarder. Steve Christie of the Buffalo Bills years later would eclipse that, but for the longest time, you had the longest field goal in Super Bowl history. What did that mean to you? Well, it was not really a very long field goal. It was 48 yards, and that, so that really wasn't a distance that I even entered my mind when I went on the field. It was a blustery day in New Orleans, Tulane Stadium, and the field wasn't very good. But it got us, out, got us off to a good start, and frankly, I was surprised that that record lasted for about 20 years. Yeah, it did last for a long time. But you know, it's funny, as the Cardinals get set to take the field against the Steelers, you got Reed and Rackers, two pretty good field goals. You know, so many of these Super Bowls are decided by field goals, people who make them, people who don't. You go back to that great Super Bowl, Jan, in 1990 between the Giants and the Buffalo Bills, and Scott Norwood misses that field goal, or the Patriots. How big was Adam Vinatieri over the years for Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots? So... Even though you're a kicker here, Jan, you guys, lots of the time, decide who are the champs and who's not. Well, it gets pretty tense. Uh, the, uh, it's a very high-risk, high-reward game. Uh, Benetieri has been terrific. He has made the, the biggest kicks on the, on the biggest stage. Uh, Norwood, it was, a, it was a long kick. It was 47, 48 yards. And I was in Tampa that day. And uh, it, it seems to me like... Uh, not going to make excuses, but the strings were kind of like five o'clock. Mm. You know, it was not right, not quite towards you, but also the side a little bit, and it makes it difficult from that distance. But so it's a kind of a, if, and I treated it like it was a twenty-yard kick or whatever. So that's that's a shame. But it goes to show you, when you play in the biggest game uh, there is, the, the 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 risk or the or the the downside is pretty strong and. The, so it's a, it gets pretty intense late in the game in the Super Bowl. There's no question about that. And, but that's, that's what you paid for. That's what you're there for. Right. And, and, look, you had a Hall of Fame career, one of three kickers, along with Lou Groza, who also played the line for the Cleveland Browns, and George Blanda, who also played quarterback for the Raiders. He had a magnificent career, had that great game in, uh, great game in Super Bowl IV, had a rough hurt against Miami years after that. But, so you've kind of experienced both sides of the fence, Jan. And when you're out there and the team is counting on you to go out and win the game, what is your mindset right before a big kick? You know, it is interesting. I had nobody to really teach me this thing. I didn't really, don't think I really became a pro until about 12, 15 years into, my, into the league because I pretty much, you know, the steps I learned to kick, the technique, it was almost self-taught. And to prepare mentally, I didn't know. It was the later in my career where I would kind of feel like I was staying, during the week. I was pretending like I was on the sideline in the game. I could almost feel what the stadium felt like, felt the pressure, and then the coach would, uh, you know, yell field goal team. So you kind of went through that in your mind over and over again. I did that late in my, my career, and I was a lot better prepared for those situations. Early on, the best you could do was just stay warm and, 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 and do the very best you can and be competitive and be stubborn and mm -hmm. realize that this is what you had to do and, and had to find a way to make it. So, but, but there was no really technique. There were no sports psychologists or any of those, those things to, to yeah. lean on in those days. But they make it easy on you guys. I mean, considering the fact that, you know, you talk about how when you played the Vikings back in Super Bowl number four, there were the rainy conditions and a rough day. But, but now, you know, Norwood missed that field goal for Buffalo against the Giants. That was in Tampa, ironically, where the Steelers and the Cardinals are going to play Super Bowl 43. But they're not playing Super Bowls outdoors in Chicago or outdoors in Minnesota, they put these games in San Diego, in Miami, in Tampa. So uh, for the life of the kicker, it's, it's much better for you guys. It does make it a little bit easier, of course, and you have people that, that snappers uh, that specialize. So you have a, most of the time you have a, you know, a, a good hold and all those, the timing and all that is perfect. But still, still, the pressure in that game, um, it, uh, it, it's significant. But here again, these guys are very good. I mean, they're better than ever, and I've been through this many times during the season. 
they're experienced kickers, but it, but it's still, I, I tell you, uh, it is it is a high stakes, high pressure situation. But that's what the job description of, of kicking in the NFL is all about. That's why you got paid what you got paid. All right, yeah. Let me talk to you about the Steelers here because when you were really good, when your Kansas City team was really good, the Steelers weren't good. Yet yeah, that happened years later, obviously, and Chuck Knoll took over in Pittsburgh and Terry Bradshaw, and they enjoyed four Super Bowl wins. Then they win another Super Bowl under Bill Cowery. Here's another chance to win a Super Bowl for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got Roethlisberger. You had Len Dawson. You had a real good defense. The Steelers have a vicious defense. So the Cardinals here, I know it's the third Super Bowl for their quarterback, Kurt Warner, but first Super Bowl for Arizona going against a team in Pittsburgh that's been there a bunch of times how much does that favor the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, of course, most of those Super Bowls had entirely different players. But it, but it has always been said, said, as long as I can remember, that you know, defense and kicking, win champ- ki- defense and kicking teams win uh, championship games or, or Super Bowls. Uh, that's always been true as long as I can remember. Now, so I think that I haven't even seen point spreads and anything like that, but I assume Pittsburgh is favored. Uh, but also, I didn't think the Cardinals were going to win their last three games. All right. And they're playing great. And all you have to do, you have to play great for four games there. You don't have to be great in the early in the season. or you know, The season is long. It's five months and 16 games, 20 games if you count the playoffs. So they're hot right now. So, uh, so I bet you they're going to put up one heck of a fight. Uh, although if I were to pick a team, I would think the defense of Pittsburgh would be the difference. I agree. Now, and by the way, the spread six and a half, not that I'm keeping score. On the way out here, Jan, your organization, Kansas City, such a proud organization and had some great years, but has really fallen on hard times. Lamar Hunt died a couple years ago. Carl Peterson, he's left the organization. Herman Edwards, his job in jeopardy. But the good news is Kansas City brings in a guy in Scott Pioli who picked all the personnel in New England the last couple of years. And it seems like there's reason for optimism now. Even Derek Thomas dying years ago was another tragedy. Just seems like until Pioli got there a couple of days ago here, Jan, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs have really been a hard luck organization. Well, it's been rough. Uh, in the early part of, of, of Carl's career, there they had Marty Schottenheimer most of the time, and then Vermeil, and and the Chiefs were doing really well. And, and it's such a great football town. I mean, the, the fans showed up seventy-eight thousand year in and year out. And but it was it was grim the last the last few years. Now, Pioli, the new kid or the new GM, I don't know much about him. Of course, when you get hired, you get all the press clippings, and he is credit for all the stuff in New England. And let's hope. Uh, let's hope that uh, he is that capable. We, we all pull for him very hard. Yeah, I think the Chiefs need to be good. It's one of those towns in the National Football League that needs to be good. Jan Stenerud, one of the greatest, well, maybe the greatest kicker of all time in the Hall of Fame. A great career with the Kansas City Chiefs and a star, of course, all the way back in Super Bowl IV when his Chiefs beat the Minnesota Vikings. Jan, thank you so much for stopping by for a couple of minutes today. It's an absolute pleasure. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Jan Stenerud's interrogation is over. And so is this show, but make sure you tune in each and every day to opensports.com, where the future of sports on the web is open. We'll see you next time. Think you can complete the drive? Play today and get an automatic entry to win daily prizes, two tickets to the big game, and a brand new car. Start your drive today at opensports.com.